Welcome to Gerald Prem Stadium, where the Sulphur Springs Wildcat will play one of their first games of the season. KSST is here to broadcast the game, as always. I don't know how many years that would be, Don, but very many years that of the uh, broadcast for KSST and for Don Julian. Who's going to have your play-by-play? -play? The Sulphur Springs Wildcats will be taking on the Frisco Wakeland Wolverines tonight, and we'll be uh, following the action. Ladies and Every play. Your attention, please. We're waiting for the now national the anthem. North end of Prim Stadium, the nationally famous Bleacher Creatures. Well, no, we're going to play the fights. So that's the Bleacher Creatures we're going to talk about now. So this is Chad Young. I'll be on the uh, color commentary with you tonight. And, of course, the gold standard in play-by-play -play coverage is our own, very own Don Julian. Don, tell us about tonight's game. Well, Chad, thank you very much. This is actually 14 uh, years in the booth and 13 uh, behind this microphone. That's right. So together, that's uh, 14 years between the two of us oh, okay. of, uh, <laughs> of experience. So All right. Well. Yeah. Uh, you know, I remember game one way back when. I had the opportunity to work with a real uh, professional uh, for had been about doing this job for 43 years, Dick Caldwell, and so honored to uh, follow him. So, uh, yeah, it's a great night. I, I was thinking about this, uh, uh, writing the intro uh, for this uh, ball game tonight, and uh, just uh, couldn't help but uh, think about, uh, you know, how it's a great start to a season. It's kind of like the beginning of baseball season or anything else. Everybody's sure. undefeated. Uh, every, you know, hopes are high, you know, the, and so it's uh, just a, a great time of year, uh, the first ball game and all that. And uh, perhaps uh, we should ease our way into the starting lineup so we can get ahead on that. I won't have starting lineups per se tonight because it's been a terrible hard time trying to get anything uh, to find anybody that knows anything about Wakeland and what they were going to do, but I'll give you some uh, players that we expect to be key contributors. And, oh, yeah, uh, especially some of those that we saw last year. That's right, um, including, well, that's a good place to start on the offense, their quarterback, big tall fellow named Dylan Leibel. Uh, they uh, will use running back by committee. We expect to see Charlie Burkhart, also Chance Delashaw, and uh, Jared White. Uh, excellent wide receiver, saw him catch a touchdown pass against the Wildcats last year, Kevin Reichel. Uh, they have a young tight end, uh, Alex Shirley. Uh, offensive lineman, four-year starter center, uh, Michael Callahan, and other good players that the coach mentioned, Ryan Tabor and also uh, Tyler Recksteiner. So just some of the players we expect from Frisco Wakeland. And now let's uh, look at the Wildcats' defenses. Here comes the Wolverines. The Wolverines are on the field. Yes, sir. And uh, let's uh, give you the Wildcats' uh, defense now, and they'll start on the nose, uh, Alex Rodriguez. And could he have a nickname other than A-Rod? I, I don't think so. Yes, he, he certainly does. Uh, the defensive tackles are DeAndre Peoples and also Cameron Coffert. The inside linebackers, Ryan Carrillo and uh, George Greenway. And the outside linebackers, Aiden Walker and also Colin Wade. The uh, cornerbacks will be Dominique Sims and Dietrich Clayton. And the safeties, uh, Chase Haney and Cordarian Bull Turner. As uh, the Wildcats are getting ready to make their appearance here. And the crowd goes wild. Oh, don't they ever. Yes, and a good crowd here tonight. Of course, a uh, beautiful night for football. Uh, not as hot as we kind of expected, Don. And so a uh, little bit of chance of rain, small chance of rain, 20% chance. And uh, I got one sprinkle as I was walking in, so nothing to worry about. We just don't want any lightning to stop things. One minute looks like on the clock to count down for game time. We still have uh, some uh, uh, lineups to uh, give. Uh, let's look at some defensive players for Wakeland. Uh, defensive lineman Preston Sneed, uh, linebacker Robbie Wilkins, defensive back Jaden Page. Safety, this is a real good one, Josh Starnes, and uh, their leader, uh, one of their leaders on defense, uh, outside linebacker Jake Marshall. Wildcats on offense will line up this way. Let's start with left tackle Chandler, Chandler Leo. The left guard is Raiden McCormick. Center is Steve Janitis. Right guard is Alfredo Olavida. And the right tackle is Giovanni Pisano. Uh, quarterback, Caden Wallace. Uh, running back and the guy that carried the flag uh, as the team came onto the field, that would be uh, Chalk Sims, DeCorian Chalk Sims. 
um, in the uh, H-back, or the, uh, the two uh, inside receivers, Bryant Sanchez and Shea Saney, and outside receivers, Noe Ponce and Bryson Lacey, and a B-back, uh, expect to see Cameron Coffert. And now I believe we're ready for that national anthem. Here it comes. We'll hold for that. that starting lineup, Don, we've got a lot of uh, guys that could play both ways. Uh, you know, we're looking Absolutely. at that depth chart. Uh, not sure how many we'll see playing both ways. And then uh, uh, the special teams also kickoff return, punt return. we got some pretty uh, fast guys on, uh, back there to return those. So it's going to be an interesting game. Uh, the uh, Frisco Wakeland Wolverines. That's probably the longest, the longest name <laughs> we're going to face this year. So we may refer to them as Frisco Wakeland or the Wolverines, whatever becomes easiest. And yeah, Wakeland would probably be a nice, uh, easy way that's to That's an easy that. way to say it. They're coming out for the uh, coin toss right now. Um, uh, among the Wildcats uh, captains out there, we see, uh, let me, wouldn't you know it, I'd freeze up on, I've been memorizing these well, names. Zach we got Tmeyer, Zach, right, also Chase ten. Haney, uh, Colin Wade, and exactly. the other one is uh, number four, Brenna. Alex, yeah, Alex Brenner. Eliezer Brenner. And so they are out there right now for the uh, coin toss. And I'm just amazed, 78 degrees. Who on Monday thought that we'd have a football game with 78 degrees? It may be rising as we speak, but it is it's lovely right now. A very nice evening. A little light breeze. I don't think it's going to be uh, much of a, an effect on the ball tonight. So if, uh, we'll keep an eye on the wind, see if it comes up. And well, here we go. Here first comes snafu that I see, one of their captains is a 62, and we don't have that number on this roster, so good luck for that. Okay. Right. Wakeland has won the toss, and they will receive the football. How odd is that? Usually everybody defers for Absolutely. the second half. But Wakeland uh, will receive and uh, take the football. The Wildcats will get the benefit of a six-mile-an-hour win uh, in the uh, first quarter. And the Wildcats will be traveling left to right across your radio dial. They sure will. And Wakeland right to left. The uh, Honorable uh, Cletus Millsap always wanted to know which direction the players were headed as, right. as he looked at his radio. So right, absolutely. We always think of the county judge when we uh, do that. And as we uh, get ready for this season, of course, we ask our uh, most valued listeners what's most important to them. And they always uh, tell us that they want to hear the score more often and the time left on the clock. So since we haven't gotten started yet, so for uh, those listening fans, the score is 0-0. Zero zero. There's 12 minutes left in the first quarter, so you know where you are. The game has not started yet. The Wolverines are all lined up, ready to receive the kick, and out come the Wildcats getting ready to kick. And it looks like they're going to be Brandon Zavala kicking off. Absolutely, and this is the J. Hodge Chevrolet home of the $100 touchdown kickoff. That's right. This is the shortest name, like the Frisco Wakeland Wolverines, <laughs> a nice long name. So we'll tell you more about that $100 Wildcat touchdown discount after a while, but here comes the J. Hodge Chevrolet kickoff. 
And Brandon Zavala, it's a short kick. It's down on the oh, first. Wow. The Wildcats recover. The Wildcats have recovered there, and it's Kylan Wade, a recovery for the Wildcats at the 47-yard line in uh, Frisco, Wakeland Territory, an onside kick. What a way wow. for Coach wow. Owens to start the 19 season. So wow. They just drove it right into the uh, first guy on the line, and he – he it went right through his hands, and they the Wildcats jumped on it, so they have the ball. And uh, back in the shotgun now, Caden Wallace. He's got uh, uh, Chalk Sims next to him. Sims uh, heads out in the flat. Wallace to throw. Pass. The screen is caught, and it's going to be for a loss of yardage. It was complete to Bryson Lacey, and Lacey was hit for a one-yard loss back to the 48-yard line. So it'll be second down and 11 for the Wildcats at the 48 in Wakeland territory. Kind of an interesting looking play, but uh, Wakeland was not fooled. They were Johnny on the spot. So second down and 11 now, and Caden Wallace has dual running backs. He's got uh, Caden Davis and also Chalk Sims uh, around him, and uh, uh, whistle blows uh, right at the snap. Something wrong there. And here, here we go. Here comes the ref. Prior to snap, got a false start on 54 offense. Five-yard penalty, replay, second down. So that uh, will make it six, uh, 16 yards needed for a first down. It's back into Wildcat territory now at the 47-yard line. I'm sure there's a lot of butterflies and jitters. Uh, the offensive line uh, getting a little bit of a quick start there, and, and that's probably to be expected out, out of the, the, this young team this year. Sure. You have some veterans on that line, but some brand new. Third down or second down and 16. Here's a running play, handoff to Caden Davis, and Davis crosses the 50, and he's down to the 48-yard line, and uh, he will pick up five yards, and it'll be uh, third down and 11 for the Wildcats. Third and long from the 48-yard line. 10:55 left in the first quarter. We're right. zero zero. Scoreless. Wildcats first drive here. Yeah, special teams came out uh, uh, with a great onside kick and absolutely the Wildcats have the ball but they're facing third and long right now got to do something with it here's a uh, uh, Walker back uh, Wallace back to pass long oh, down the field caught for a first down for the Wildcats a uh, Noe Ponce makes the catch at the 36 yard line for the Wildcats and that's good enough Noe does a great job of running a pattern that was long enough for the first down even though he had to come back for it a little bit first and 10 for the Wildcats and uh, that is a Hooten Hardware first down Hooten's Hardware of Emory is sponsoring all of our first downs this season for the Wildcats. And now back to Wallace. Here's a handoff, Caden Davis. Uh, Davis up to about the 33-yard uh, line. That'll be a gain of three on the play. It'll be second down and seven for the Wildcats now at the 33-yard line in Wakeland Wolverine territory. Second down, seven. Wildcats huddled up, and now they quickly uh, head to the line of scrimmage. Three receivers off to the right side, uh, one to the left for the Wildcats. And uh, Wallace waiting for the snap here on second and seven. And he will uh, running play again to Davis. Davis uh, across the 20. He's uh, going to be, looks like, a yard, uh, two yards short of the first down. It'll be third down and two yards needed. The ball down at the 28-yard line. Uh, Wildcats uh, with a big, uh, I believe their initial uh, big uh, third down play here. Well, they uh, converted on that last third and 11 with that uh, long pass. And, uh, oh, you're absolutely kept, right. Yeah, kept them alive. And so they've got a short third and two right here. Uh, what are you thinking, Don? Running play or passing play? You never know. That's right. Uh, Coach Young is not giving away any secrets. Here's uh, back to Wallace. It will be a running play, and uh, it's uh, going to be Davis for the first down. He crosses the 25 to the 24-yard line. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. They've converted two third-down plays now. And so now we're at another Hooten's Hardware first down. And it's at the 24 in uh, Wakeland Territory. Again, I was trying to, it was the 47 uh, where this drive began. Right. want to be sure and uh, mark that down. Clock is ticking down, 8.43 left, 0-0 zero, zero is our score. And Wallace uh, back in the shotgun, two receivers left and right for the Wildcats. Takes the snap, a fake running play. Wallace fires the ball down the field, oh, and incomplete. it's incomplete. 
Good defense by Wakeland. Probably a good job by the Wildcats to break that pass up. That was Dietrich Clayton, the receiver. And Clayton may have, he's a defender, but yep. probably more natural in my mind, but probably did a good job of uh, making sure that ball was not intercepted that time. Second down and 10 from the 24-yard line for the Wildcats. Two receivers left and right. And Wallace, the quarterback. Oh. And now we have uh, a... And, oh, an illegal procedure. Yep. Must have been a little motion. This is a second penalty on the Wildcats. Part of the snap. False start, Silver Springs, number 11. It's a five-yard penalty. Replay second down. And the ball back to the 29-yard line. It'll be uh, second down and 15 now for the Wildcats at the 29-yard line. Well, if you're going to get 10, you might as well just go for 15. Sure. And second down. Big offensive line up to, up to the line of scrimmage. And Wallace looking things over. Two receivers left and right. Receiver right next to him. He's looking to pass a handoff Ooh, yes, to Chuck Sims across the 30 to 25. Sims uh, down across the 20-yard line, and he's going to be hit right at the 20. That'll be uh, uh, about five and a half yards shy of the first down. Let's, let's call it six from uh, the 20-yard uh, line. So third down and six. This will be the third, third down play for the Wildcats on third and six from the 20. Looks like Sam got uh, face mackle or, or, or horse collared there at the end of that tackle, but they didn't call it. Did not. Here's a snap back to Wallace and a handoff to Sims. He looks for a hole. There is none to be had that time. And we may see the Wildcats first attempt at a field goal uh, this year as that play is jammed up. He got wrapped up. They could possibly go for it. Uh, that's a possibility, but it is a good solid uh, like nine yards, so it's fourth and nine. And uh, now here comes a field goal unit led by a Brandon Zavala, and his holder is Campbell Cody. That's a mo most important job for a young man, Campbell Cody. And this will be Brandon Zavala, and this will be a 40-yard field goal attempt for the Wildcats. The snap is a good one. The ball is down. Zavala's kick is on the way toward the uprights. And the kick is good for the Wildcats. A 40-yard field goal by Brandon Zavala. And uh, Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says way to go, Wildcats. Yes, sir. And uh, a, a beautiful uh, long field goal by Brandon Zavala. Seven minutes left uh, here in the first quarter of play. The Wildcats three and Wakeland zero. Let's take a break here, and we'll be back in a moment. All right, we're back, and uh, Wildcats are first on the board. Uh, we've got uh, a score of three to zero. Wildcats winning seven minutes even to go, and here comes the Jayhawk Chevrolet kickoff. It's another, another onside, onside kick. kick, and it's rolling and, around. Yeah. The Wildcats may have it again, and Colin, let's they got it. I'm trying to see. It looks like uh, Ryan Carrillo. I believe came up with that ball for the Wildcats at the 42-yard line. Now let's see if uh, that stayed in bounds. And, uh, yeah, it looks like yep. that Wakeland defense is already back out there. And the Wildcats are just not – they're playing very rude host here <laughs> as they've decided not to share the football uh, at all. Absolutely. Tonight. Two onside – only kicks that have been made today. Are, and they're both onside kicks by the Wildcats, both recovered by the Wildcats. So we've got a great start. The uh, uh, offense is back out there. The Caden Wallace is back out as quarterback. And here we go. Back to Wallace. Uh, he's uh, back in the pocket uh, looking to throw. He's going to throw deep. It's a long throw, and uh, Aiden Wa uh, Walker got tripped up, and flags are flying everywhere. Uh, the Wakeland players uh, saying uh, that it was offensive. But it looks like a, a official gave a, what I would say is a holding uh, uh, indication. So, anyway, we'll let the officials announce it to Here us. Here comes the call. Well, and he's conversing. <laughs> he's <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get that on. on yeah. Holding. Silver Only Springs, number 52. Thing. Holding. Number 36, Frisco. This penalty is well offset. Replay first down. You know, I thought at the snap I saw a flag fly, but I, I looked and I didn't see it yeah. as I followed the ball down the field. But it, it indeed there was. So right offsetting up. holding penalties. It'll be uh, first down and 10, uh, the uh, never mind uh, penalty against both teams, so first down and 10 from the 42-yard line. 
And Wallace back in the shotgun will take the snap, and it'll be a running play, broken tackle across the 40. This is Caden Davis, and Davis continuing to uh, run hard all the way down to the 36-yard line. That was a a nice uh, gain on the play, and it's going to be, looks like four yards needed for the uh, first down for the Wildcats. Second down and four. Second down four. And the ball at the 36-yard line for the Wildcats. That was a Davis uh, broke a tackle initially there that could have uh, jammed oh, yeah, that play he up. Probably would have lost yardage, but he got out of that, got on down the road. Wallace takes the snap. He comes back. It's a screen. There's a throw, and the ball is incomplete. Boy, Wakeland was not fooled yeah. by that screen. They were all over uh, Chalk Sims. He was covered up. Or no, excuse me, that was Caden Davis. Yep. And incomplete pass. And so we'll go back to uh, well, actually third down now and four from the uh, 36-yard line. Wildcats have overcome a couple of them. They're two out of three on the third down conversion. That's some pretty quick stats there, Don. It's yeah, so just amazing sometimes. <laughs> and we've had uh, we've had the ball just uh, uh, Frisco Wakeland has not uh, had a chance to get the ball. Their, their special teams are going to have a, a rude awakening the next kickoff. Back to Wallace. Here's a throw down the field. Incomplete. Tried yeah. to hit Chase Haney down the field. Chase Haney laid it out there. He uh, went off the sidelines and uh, got one hand on it, but just couldn't pull it in and was out of bounds. So. Chase Haney is the, is the answer to the trivia question. There were 11 receivers on the team last year. One of them was an underclassman. And the answer, Chase, Chase Haney. Haney. And so uh, that all the others, all 10 of those, and that's pretty typical of last year's team, very senior laden. Here's a big uh, fourth and four. The Wildcats going for it. Wallace back to pass. Throws down the field. Caught. First down for the Wildcats. And that was uh, Bryant Sanchez at the 30-yard line. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. Oh, what a dart by Wallace. Beautiful pass. And that is another Hooten's Hardware first down. There you go. Thank you. I've seen that place. That is a large it's a 40, place. It's 40,000 square foot hardware store, but they're, they're more than nuts and bolts. Hooten's Hardware, first down. Here we go. All right, Wallace uh, back in the shotgun. First down and 10 from uh, the 30-yard line. We'll uh, hand off to Davis. Davis uh, through there for just a couple of yards. Uh, he'll be stopped at the 28-yard line. Second down and eight for the Wildcats at the uh, Wolverine 28-yard line. Wildcats have been in Wolverine territory all uh, of the first quarter. That is true. Every play, except, uh, you know, the kickoffs have have occurred in uh, Wolverine territory. So here's second down and eight from the 28. And uh, Caden Wallace uh, back in the shotgun. Wallace takes a snap. He backs up. He throws a pass incomplete. Trying to back out of the backfield there toward uh, Caden Davis, incomplete. Third down and eight from the 28. Three, three to zero, the Wildcats winning 454 left in the first quarter. Wildcats in Wolverine territory all the way down on the 28 yard line. Third and eight. They've converted a couple of uh, third and longs already. They've gone for it on fourth down and made it. And so uh, the Wildcat offense just keeps driving. We just didn't know we had hired a riverboat gambler and uh, Greg Owens. He's really (laughs) rolling the dice tonight. Fake to the running back. Throw down the field. Incomplete. Tried to get it into Chase Haney. And that uh, we'll see if the Wildcats uh, try another field goal or whether they go for it here. It would be uh, probably like in the vicinity of a 45-yard field goal. So they look like uh, they are going to go for this fourth down and eight from the uh, 28-yard line. No sign of Brandon Zavala or uh, OCL Lopez. Wallace stays in. Wallace back in the shotgun. Two receivers left and right. He takes a snap. He's back to pass. He fires it down the field. It's caught by uh, Chaney or Haney, and he is down to about the five-yard line, and wow, did he get open. First and ten for the Wildcats, and a beautiful pass by Caden Wallace. Right on the money. Chaney really got open. He outran that defender and uh, got right on the ball and then just kept going and got drugged down. Uh, So they're now going to be 
They've spotted all the way on the looks like the five yard line. Uh, five yard line, first so, down so. and goal. Haney uh, made the catch, and it's my fault for calling him Chaney. I appreciate. Uh, I apologize for that. And here's a running play, and it'll be across the five. Uh, the running back down to about the three yard line. Is that Caden Davis again? No, that was uh, Chalk Sims. That would be uh, DeCorian uh, Chalk Sims. I had a conversation with him in practice one day as he was trying to cool off over by the training area, and he told me all about that he had been known for Chalk as long as he could remember. He's had that nickname. Second down and goal now for the Wildcats at the three-yard line. And back to Wallace and uh, running play and uh, hitting in there. Touchdown, Wildcats. Chalk Sims never got knocked off his feet. Touchdown for the Chalk Man. And Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says way to go, Wildcats, on that score. And uh, kind of a, an oddity in the game here. Both uh, touchdowns have been scored with even time on the clock. After the first touchdown, seven minutes left, and now four minutes are left as the extra point is pending here. Again, Campbell Cody is holding for the kicker. The ball is back, and the kick is on the way, and the kick is good. And once again, that was Brandon Zavala with the extra point. And the Wildcats have jumped all over uh, Frisco Wakeland here. The Wildcats 10, and Frisco Wakeland 0. Four minutes left here in the first quarter. Let's take a break. Back in a moment. Jay Hodge Chevrolet home of the $100 touchdown kickoff coming up. And once again, for the third time, here's Brandon Zavala. Third time, the charm. Are we looking for another onside kickoff? I bet Wakeland is. And now another player, OCL Lopez, kicks oh, it short. Little it's in the kick. flat uh, across the 35. Oh, a hard hit by the Wildcats on that special team. And uh, Wakeland will have the ball first and 10 at their own 36-yard line. And they say, finally, this team uh, from Sulphur Springs is going to let us have the football with 3.52 left here in the first quarter. And the Wakeland uh, Wolverines are pushed all the way down to uh, their own 36-yard line, which is most of the territory where the Wildcats have been all this time, and now they're set up to go. Dylan Liable is the quarterback back in the shotgun for uh, Frisco Wakeland. He'll take the snap. It will be a running play off to the right side, and the uh, running back will be up around uh, the 40-yard line. That's a gain of about five on the play. Okay. And I did not hear the uh, PA announcement on the runner. It looked like, oh, Charlie Burkhardt. Okay, we expected him to get a heavy load. Second down and uh, six for Wakeland at the 40. And liable, the quarterback. He's liable to throw the ball or hand off as he does right here. And another running play for Wakeland. And they bust this one behind that uh, offensive line. And... Uh, Looked like number 11 again. Or was it 15? Uh, it looked like 15 to me, uh, Chance uh, Delashaw. Again, we said running back by committee, and that's two of the three we expected. Here is first and 10 for uh, Wakeland at their own 44-yard line after a couple of runs. And Libel sends a man in motion, and he sets up uh, right to the right tackle, and they'll have a running play. Once again, it's Burkhardt, and now he looked like his feet uh, kind of gave way there. And uh, after he had gained about four, uh, well, not even that much. Looks like three, doesn't it? Yeah, actually two. And so uh, let's uh, one, two. Yeah, uh, two he must yards. have uh, drug a knee there before because it looked like he went a little farther. But they marked it back a gain of two, second and eight. Second down and eight, and the ball is at the 48-yard uh, line. And uh, Libel, the quarterback, he's going to throw this one. And now he's uh, flushed out of the pocket, getting chased by uh, Coffert. And uh, then uh, the ball is on the ground at the 50. There's a big scramble for it. Boy, somebody came up uh, pumping the fist. Uh, I think that was Brenna down there. And uh, the, the, uh, the recovery was by Wakeland at the 50, so it's going to be third down and six yards needed right at midfield for the Wolverines because they've come out with a heavy dose of, uh, of uh, running here. They may have switched quarterback. No, no, the libel. I thought the, the 12 came in over here in the flat, but that was 22. So 
Libel is still back at the quarterback on this uh, third down and six. Takes a snap, and they'll try. No, a fake to the running back, and now Libel's going to keep, and he oh, will he gets- not make the first down. A great pair of uh, Wildcats coming up for the hit, including Aiden Walker over there. And looked like the other one may have been Dominique Sims from the corner. And it's going to be fourth and six for Wakeland. How would you feel if you were Wakeland? Do you want to give this ball back to the Wildcats who uh, already they, scored ten points? They, they, they are acting like they want to go for it, but uh, they certainly they, they're right in midfield. They need to punt it, but they're they're going for it here on fourth and six from midfield. They may figure they may not see the ball for a while. But I don't know. Uh, they may be trying to draw him off sides. Libel maybe he can pump oh, the ball, and that's what he's going to oh. do. And he sends it down the field. The Wildcats don't have anybody deep, and it's going to bounce uh, right around the 11-yard line. And that's where it will be blown dead. So it, it is effective in in uh, putting the Wildcats deep in their own territory. And that was a uh, 39-yard punt by uh, the quarterback, uh, Dylan Libel. And that's not bad. That's not a bad average for a no, punt. Absolutely. Especially for a quarterback that just kind of wanted to surprise everybody. Here come the Wildcats, by the way. Wallace out there. Caden Davis. We got uh, Campbell Cody coming in there. We also have Chalk Sims in there. Noe Ponce is in. And Brian Sanch- Sanchez. Or No, that's Lacey. Bryson Lacey. Also uh, uh, a wide out uh, on this near side just down below us. So Wallace, the Wildcats have to protect that ball first and 10 from their own 11. And uh, here's a run up the middle. And uh, looks like a loss of a couple on the play for the Wildcats. Because that was uh, Chalk Sims. And a loss of two on, or t- loss of, yeah, loss of two on the play. Looks like they're going to mark that originally at the, at well, that is the 11-yard line. Let's just say second and 11 from the 10 for the Wildcats. Wallace back in the shotgun has both running backs uh, around him back there in kind of a T or a top of a T. And there's a snap back to Wallace. He looks down the field, throws the ball down the field, almost uh, intercepted. He tried to, he threw in the general direction of a couple of receivers. He had uh, T. Meyer down there. No, excuse me, that's uh, Landry Meskimen and also Bryson Lacey. And it was kind of thrown in their general area. It looked like a uh, Wakeland player was a little bit closer, but the ball ended up uh, in the end of the turf. And no harm, no foul. So here's a big third down and 11 for the Wildcats at the 10-yard line. They've pushed back pretty far, but they've made these uh, conversions before. Yes, they have. Here's a snap back to Wallace. Pass. He's uh, stepping up in the pocket down there. It's uh, caught. Looks like Noe Ponce again right at the first down marker. No, that's a new receiver, excuse me. And that is uh, going to be uh, Dietrich uh, Clayton. Number 11. Oh, that was? Oh, okay. I, I don't know what I was looking at. It looked like a single, single digit, but that is truly 11. And that's where Pont should be. And so first down and 10 for the Wildcats, and that's two really good clutch catches that's by great. Noe Ponce. He is a savvy player. And certainly on uh, third down conversion, so this is going to be Yet another Hooten's Hardware first down. Yeehaw. Well, glad to hear that. And let's see. We've got a timeout taken. And actually, that's the end of the first quarter and one that the Wildcats fans have got to love. So uh, the end of the first quarter here from Gerald Prim Stadium, the Wildcats of Sulphur Springs 10, Frisco Wakeland 0. Let's take a break, and we'll be back in a moment. It's 12 minutes uh, left in the second quarter. Start of the second quarter, Wildcats 10, Frisco, Wakeland, Wolverine 0. And the Wildcats have the ball first and 10 on their own 22-yard line. And Wallace uh, back in the shotgun has a running back uh, back there with him. Two receivers left and right. It will be a running play, and uh, that's uh, Davis. And Davis spills forward to about the 23, only a gain of one on the play. It'll be second down and nine. I thought about uh, Wakeland uh, running that ball so much on the first down. You know, they made 39 yards of rushing last year, and they probably were really wanting to come in and run the football tonight. But uh, so with kind of mixed results so far as uh, the first uh, drive fizzle. So this is uh, second down and about nine from uh, the 23-yard line. Wallace back in the shotgun. 
Takes the snap. Back in the pocket. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. He looks and now fires the ball down the field. Up for grabs here. Incomplete. And a Frisco defend, uh, Wakeland defender actually got a hand on that ball there. And that uh, was uh, Jordan uh, Jaden Page, uh, defensive back. We talked about him as uh, players to watch uh, in, in lieu of a starting lineup. Well, I hope to have those next week, but our, our, our coaching staff just couldn't help us much. They had only seen a scrimmage with players wearing funky numbers. Wildcats did the same thing. I was on the sideline saying, "Who? oh, that's uh, that player that's uh, in the wrong jersey. <laughs> right. Here's a third down and nine. Big play for the Wildcats from their own 23. Wallace uh, takes a snap. Here's a pass uh, over in the flat. Davis, and he's going to be hit and driven back just about uh, at the line of scrimmage. So may have even lost back to about the 22. So it's going to be fourth and ten for the Wildcats, and they will have to uh, give up the football. This will be their first punt. It's going to be interesting to see who they use as a punter. They've had three uh, prospects. And this is one of them. This is Noe Ponce. They, Brandon Zavala can also punt, as can Caden Wallace. So this will be Noe Ponce. We'll get his uh, first uh, try. 10.42 left uh, here in the second quarter. Wildcats leading 10 to nothing. And Noe Ponce back to punt. wonder if he can throw a pass out of that formation. He Wake does the rugby kick, and down the field it goes. It'll bounce, and it'll be taken by Wakeland across the 45. A yeah, player on the back there, that was Wiley Bennett, and now he's joined by a lot of teammates. Then they blow the receiver dead at the 48-yard uh, line. I want to say that was about 34 yards for Noe Ponce on that punt where it was returned, somewhere in that uh, vicinity. First down and 10 for uh, Wakeland at their uh, own 48-yard uh, line as they trail 10 to nothing with 10-20 left uh, here in the second quarter. And here come the Wolverines. And again, Dylan Liable, a big, tall quarterback, and he's had some looks from colleges. They're checking him out. Uh, man in motion, a handoff sweeping around the left side across the 50 and uh, breaks a tackle and falls forward uh, down. Uh, let's see, they're going to mark him back around the 45-yard uh, line. That'll be three yards uh, shy of the first down. That run was by Peyton Lewis, who is, uh, among other things, a backup quarterback for uh, Wakeland. I would imagine this will be Liable's year. He's uh, He came on strong last season. Uh, I was talking to Coach Secord, and and uh, so they have big hopes for for this big tall fellow this year. Second down and three. Now the snap back to Liable. He's back to pass. Big rush. Pass is caught out of the backfield, and the the receiver will make the first down up uh, to the 41-yard line. And the pass was caught by Jared White, kind of the third member of that uh, running back by committee that we talked about. So first down and 10 for the Wolverines at the 41-yard uh, line. And here they come up to the 41. Only the second time the Wolverines been in Wildcat territory tonight. And Libel takes the snap. Here's a handoff to White. White burst it right up the middle. Almost broke a tackle, but he was finally wrestled to the ground at the 34-yard line. That's a gain of seven as this drive has looked so much better for uh, Wakeland. So second down and three now for the ball at the 34-yard uh, line for the uh, Wakeland Wolverines. They've been in existence in 06 over there in the rapidly expanding uh, now has 10 high schools. They were either the third or the fourth, the way you want to look at it. It was the original Frisco, then Frisco Centennial came on, and then in 06 they opened Wakeland and Liberty. And so those were the first four high schools now that it's expanded to 10, and I don't know, maybe an 11th or 12th open this year. Timeout uh, taken Time out. on the field. Frisco, first short time out of the half. 8.31 uh, left here in the second quarter. The Wildcats 10 and Wakeland 0. We'll take a break. Back in a moment. And we're back. It's 8.31 left on the clock in the second quarter at Prem Stadium. Wildcats lead 10 to nothing. The Frisco Wake Wakeland Wolverines uh, have the ball. It's uh, second and three, and they're down on the Wildcat 34. And they're back in the shotgun. Libel back there has two receivers out to the right side. Libel takes a snap. 
He's uh, getting a rush. He throws the ball. It's uh, caught uh, in the secondary across the 30, across the 20, oh boy. and all the way. Kevin Reichel uh, knocked out of bounds uh, inside the one-yard line. Kevin Reichel. Uh, the, probably the most feared receiver uh, for uh, Wakeland, and he takes it all the way down in, inside, maybe a foot inside the uh, one-yard line. First down and goal for the Wolverines. He was just way outside when he got that ball, and just uh, pretty quick outran the defenders. As I think I mentioned uh, in the early parts of, of the pregame, uh, that uh, Reichel had caught a touchdown pass against the Wildcats. The guy that had the field day, and I say that kind of with tongue in cheek, his name was Fields, uh, he graduated. Here's a uh, first and one play, handoff uh, Bur Burkhart, and uh, touchdown for Frisco Wakeland. That makes it a 10-6 ball game with extra point pending here on the one yard TD run by Burkhart. The uh, word was, on. I'm sure they were talking about Burkhart, they were talking about he was a rugged runner. He, he runs very hard for the uh, Wolverines. An extra point now from Cragen. This is Tanner uh, Cragen. Oh, somebody jumped on the uh, Wildcat That's side and went ahead and kicked it. And they will uh, decline that. So they... So the extra point is good. They'll wave off the uh, flag. Let's see if we're going to get an announcement here. I hope. Come on. Offsides on the defense, number 45. Penalty is declined. Try is good. All right, there you go. So now we know everything. Uh, 8.14 left here in the second quarter. That was Hercule Poirot, by the way, that said that first. 8.14 left in the second quarter. New score now here. The Wildcats of Sulphur Springs 10 and the Wakeland Wolverine 7. Let's take a break. Back in a moment. And uh, kickoff now from Cragen, who uh, tacked on that extra point. That's Tanner Cragen. He's a senior. And let's see if they've got any onside kicks in the book. Here comes the Jay Hodge Chevrolet kickoff to the Wildcats. Long uh, kick on this one. Wow, what a kickoff. It hit 10 deep in the end zone. He took advantage of that little light wind, in which it looks like the wind has picked up, and that kind of helped him. It went uh, almost uh, made it to the uprights there. Yeah, that was a heck of a kick. Uh, like I say, landing about 10 yards in the end zone. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. They'll start at the 25 after the uh, touchback. Wildcats receiver kind of waved at it as it sailed over his head. And here comes the offense. You see uh, Haney in there with uh, Lacey, the receivers. Uh, also, Noe Ponce, and there's one guy in the slot that I didn't catch. But quarterback is Wallace, and we'll find that receiver. Trip receivers out to the right for the Wildcats. First and 10 from the 25. Wallace back to pass. Here's a pass caught by Chalk Sims across the 20. Across the 25, busting tackles. Chalk went across the 30 and was finally uh, marked down at uh, the 32-yard line, I believe, all the way. And uh, that's a excellent gain of seven for the Wildcats. It'll be second down and three from the 32-yard uh, line for the Wildcats. They have 8.05 to go in the second quarter. It's uh, Wildcats 10 and Wakeland 7 here from Gerald Prim Stadium. Wallace takes the snap. It'll be a running play. Oh, Chalk Sims was knocked backwards as he looked for a hole, and he must have headbutted or got hit by a Wakeland player. And let's see where they mark him. They're going to mark him for a loss. No, actually no gain on the play, so it'll be, be third down and three for the Wildcats at uh, the 32-yard line. Now every, everybody got the signal, and uh, Wallace is back in the shotgun on this big third down play. Sims in motion. Wallace looking uh, down the field. Fires to Sims, made the catch, and then he got wrapped up and dumped uh, backwards by uh, Wakeland players as they are really showing a lot of reaction on some plays, and that's going to blow that up, and the Wildcats will be, for the second straight time, will have to uh, have another punt from the 29-yard line. And it will be uh, fourth down and six. And Noe Ponce is back to kick. 
Just under the seven minute mark here in the second quarter and the Wildcats leading 10-7, but they look to be about to give up the football here. Pont standing at the 15, high snap, but he comes down with it and boots it out of there. And uh, it sailed into the sideline. Let's see where they mark the ball. And they're going to mark it at the, uh, oh, now they're taking off some more yardage. It's going to be the 48-yard line. That was a 33-yard kick by Ponce. And first down and 10 for Wakeland, and they'll be at their own uh, 48-yard line. 6.35 left in the second quarter. Wildcats 10, Wakeland Wolverine 7. And the Wolverines again with uh, Dylan Liable, the senior quarterback. Has two receivers off to the right, one to the left. And Liable will hand off to an up back and uh, running uh, into the secondary, picking up the first down all the way to the 40-yard line. First and 10 for uh, the Wakeland, and that was Chance Delashaw on the carry. And they're going to mark it at the 41-yard line. So first down and 10 for Wakeland. Looks like 11 yards, perhaps, on that run. Yep. And uh, Aiden Walker among the tacklers, according to our good uh, PA announcer here, uh, Kevin Woolley. Back to uh, Libel. Libel throws an out pattern incomplete. Trying to hook up the Reichel again, but uh, missed him on the pass. It'll be it'll be second down and ten from the uh, 41 yard line in Wildcats territory for the Wolverines. A bigger school than uh, Wildcats. They're a Division One. They've got some monsters in that district. Frisco Lone Star and also the Colony are both ranked. Second down and ten for the Wolverines. Wildcats Division Two. Man in motion, and they snap, and uh, it's a handoff up the middle, ripping it there is uh, Bur Burkhart, and uh, he makes a lot of yardage. He stopped uh, shy of the first down at about the 33-yard uh, line. That'll be two yards short of the first down. So it'll be third down and two for the uh, Wolverines. They're kind of in four-down territory, you would think, from the 33-yard line. So Wildcats defense with their hands full here. And we have a uh, timeout. Timeout taken. Five. Uh, where was it? 5:30. I'm not. 5:24 left uh, here in the second quarter. 5:37. Yep. They're going to reset it to 5:30. Please reset the clock to 5:37. 5:37. Sulphur Springs. Cow. First first time out of the half. Thank you, sir. 5:37 left here in the second quarter. The Wildcats 10 and Frisco Wakeland 7. Back in a moment. We're back at Gerald Prem Stadium. 5.37 on the clock. The Frisco Wolverines are third down and two on their, the Wildcat 33-yard line. And uh, Libel back in the shotgun here on a big third down play. And gets the snap and uh, running uh, right up the middle. Oh, a nice uh, defensive play as a player came in and really laid the wood on there. It'll be close uh, toward the first down. I'm not sure. I don't what, think he made it, but... That looked like uh, that might have been DeAndre Peoples coming in from the side. It looks like a yard short of the first down. It's going to be fourth and one on that beautiful play. I think, again, I think that was uh, DeAndre Peoples. You'll have to watch uh, Doug's uh, replay to be for sure. Here's fourth and one. Libel under center for uh, Wakeland. And now, uh, now he looks at the sideline. But uh, he right. continues under center. The Wildcats packing it in there. And uh, running play uh, hits forward, though, gained all kinds of yards. Uh, across the 30, looked like, down to about the 29. So picks up the first and a little bit more. As again, that was Delashaw on the run, the it short was. run yep. for a few yards. And first down and 10 for Wakeland. And they will be on the 29-yard line of the Wildcats, first down and 10 and staring into that sideline to get the play from Wakeland. Both these teams had spring football, so they've had one less week than a lot of schools in Texas. And the snap back to uh, Libel. He's in the pocket. He steps up, throws a pass incomplete. Tried to get it in there to Delashaw out of the backfield. Incomplete, and it'll be second down and 10 from the 29-yard line. By the way, the Wildcats think that uh, that trade-off is a wonderful thing, and they feel like they have benefited greatly 
from being able to evaluate their players in the spring right. and the players' retention is very high. They may not. So the trade-off always, is they, could, they uh, have to start practice late. One week and they lose a scrimmage. Here's a handoff and a short gain uh, for uh, Wakeland. And Jared White, the ball carrier. Let's see, Carrillo on the tackle. They, they move it down to the 27-yard line. So two yards. So it'll be uh, third down and eight. By the way, about that trade-off, I think the Wildcats don't miss the practice. What right. they miss is that second scrimmage. I get that impression over and over again. They would like to see somebody else one more time. They just wish, but they're not particularly ready to beat up on each other for another week. Third down and eight now. Two libels. He rolls to the right side. The throw it. down the field. Caught by uh, Wakeland and uh, knocked out of bounds. And that's going to be, it appears, uh, good enough uh, for a first down. It's first down and uh, 10 from the 16-yard line as Wakeland completes a pass. And so Wakeland uh, trying to take the lead here. There's just 3.26 left here in the second quarter. The Wildcats are leading Wakeland by the score of 10 to 7. Two receivers out to the left, single receiver to the right. They've also got what we would call a B-back in there, and he's now in motion. He changed sides. Back to Libel, and uh, he will fake uh, and then throw the ball. Oh. It's caught, and that's going to be a touchdown for uh, Wakeland, a 16-yard touchdown. What a, what a sneaky play. That and was. It looked like a handoff, and then Libel brought it down and threw the touchdown pass to Kevin Reichel. He almost had one earlier. He was knocked down at the one-yard line, but... Uh, uh, Libel to uh, to Reichel, and uh, just like last year's game, back and forth. Extra point now for Cragen, Tanner Cragen, as Wakeland right now leads 13-10 with extra point pending. Snap a good one, balls down, the kick on the way, extra point is good. So Wakeland has taken their first lead in the ball game. Frisco Wakeland 14, the Wildcats 10. Three minutes left uh, here in the second quarter. Three Let's minutes. take a break, and we'll be back in a moment. Back at Prem Stadium, three minutes uh, left in the half. The Wakeland Wolverines are leading 14 to 10 over the Wildcats, and we're, Wildcats are getting ready to receive. And uh, kicking again will be Tanner Cragen. Back deep for the Wildcats is uh, Caden Davis and also Chalk Sims. And here comes Cragen. And he will boot it deep. He sure did last time. And this one's going to be the same song second verse. It hit about six or seven yards deep in the end zone and then shot on through. So well, Cragen's having a great night kicking the football. And it does look like, to, at least to my eyes, about a 10-mile-an-hour breeze favoring Wakeland in this second quarter. And so far, the wind has followed the scoring in the game. The Wildcats led 10 to nothing with the wind in the first quarter. And now Wakeland has answered with 14 points in the second quarter with the wind. And here come the Wildcats. Uh, they're from the uh, 25-yard line. Caden Wallace, the quarterback, trip receivers out to the right side, a single receiver to the left. Wallace takes a snap and uh, fakes the running play down the middle. Caught by the Wildcats. He's into the secondary. Across the 50, across the 40, it's across the 30, and finally dragged down at the 20-yard line, complete to Zach T. Meyer. Down to the 20-yard line. Oh, my. T. Meyer pretty swift when he got in that secondary. The coaches will get on him about being caught from behind, though. You can bet they won't miss that. <laughs> he, he, he outran a lot of defenders, but he uh, got uh, finally got wrapped up there and was going to be pushed out of bounds. That was a 55-yard completion. Here comes another Hootens Hardware first down. And here's a handoff in uh, Davis running hard in there. Davis down to about the 16-yard line, gain of four on the play. It'll be second down and six for the Wildcats as uh, they run it down to the 16-yard line. This is just beginning to remind me so much of last year's thriller. 37-35, to 35, the Wildcats win it in uh, Frisco Memorial Stadium one year ago. Wallace uh, from the shotgun. 
on this uh, second down and six. They didn't go with a quick snap. Now they'll look over to the sideline. You can always tell who's signaling the plays in. They, they've got the shirt that shines in the dark down there. I think that's Shane McQueen has that role. Here's a snap and a uh, handoff uh, running back. Uh, this is Chalk Sims around the corner, and Sims got down to around the 11 or 12-yard line. Looks like they're going to mark it at the 11, and that will be a yard short of the first down. It'll be third down and one for the Wildcats from the 11-yard line. And I think that was Caden Davis who got the ball that time. Oh, okay. Two and three are hard to tell. They the are. But third and one. We want to properly identify the players. Here's uh, the big third and one. And now Wallace under center. I didn't even know they did this. And Wallace straight ahead all the way down to the uh, edge of the 16-yard box if we were playing soccer. But uh, finally, uh, Wallace uh, corralled uh, down there around the 18-yard uh, line. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. And this is a Hooten's Hardware first down for the Wildcats. And it's going to be first and goal. They're actually uh, first down the, and goal from the yeah, eight. the nine, yeah, eight or nine yard line. They've got it marked on the eight. Good man, Jim Moore has it marked at the eight. Here's a handoff, and again, Davis around the right oh. side. Davis inside the five, fighting toward the goal line, and he, he they say he scored. I haven't seen the officials. The Wildcats yep. say so. Yep. No indicate. Yes, touchdown, Wildcats. That ought to have Brad uh, Johnson saying something. How about way to go Wildcats? Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says way to go Wildcats. There was a uh, little delayed reaction there on the officials. He uh, kept fighting and got in there. Well, you saw the Wildcats offensive line, though. They were signaling touchdown. They, they were trying to help a out. A long this. time. So a, a good hard run by Caden Davis. 58 Extra seconds point. left. Here's a snap. The ball is down. The kick by Brandon Zavala, and the kick is good. 58 seconds left here in the second quarter. The Wildcats beat the clock. The Wildcats 17 and Frisco Wakeland 14. Let's take a break here and we'll be back in a moment. That was a 75 yard uh, touchdown drive for the Wildcats as they responded after falling behind to Frisco Wakeland. Wakeland will be trying to beat the clock now as this looks like uh, OCL Lopez. Well, he and uh, Zavala both are both there. out there, and now Lopez mm -hmm. will kick the ball. It's a short one taken in uh, just right past the, the 30, across the 40, and a uh, flag flies as uh, the ball carrier on the kick return is uh, brought down across the 45-yard line. But a, usually that's a block uh, only returning team. But listen, we don't want to assume anything here. The official in the white cap will give us the word. So far, a 10-yard return on that kick. The, both uh, kickers, Osio Lopez and Zavala, lined up, and then Osio kicked it. Here comes the uh, call. Ball in the back, number 29 on Frisco. It's a 10-yard penalty from the spot. First down. So that'll uh, cost him with a block in the back. As we said, that's usually what you get from that spot on the field. So they will uh, look like they're marking from the 39. Actually, they marked it to the 31-yard line. So uh, first down and 10 for the Wolverines from their own uh, 31. They have 53 seconds, and the Wildcats are leading 17 to 14. And Libel with some dangerous fellows out there to throw to. He throws the ball out in the flat, caught by White across the 30, the 35 to the 40, now up across the 45 to the 46-yard line. The tackle made inbounds. The clock. Has, has been stopped because they made the first down and while they moved the chains. So first down and 10 from uh, the 46-yard line for the Wolverines. Once that 10-yard uh, uh, mark uh, group is in ready to go, they'll roll the clock, and it is down to 33 seconds. Liable the quarterback. We'll take the snap. He's back to pass, looking uh, deep down the field. He throws the ball down the field. It is caught by Reichel, and he is knocked out of bounds. A good, solid tackle, but he got all the way down to the 34-yard line. First down and 10 in Wildcats territory. Just 22 seconds, all that's left here in the second quarter. Wildcats leading 17-14. He picked up about 20 yards on that pass. It was... Uh... Yeah, that's a, they're getting some big uh, real estate. But they've still got uh, 34 to go with 22 ticks. Back to Libel. He's looking and now throws it uh, down the. Oh, the oh, receiver looked like he never looked he at never it. He never even saw it, never turned around. Uh, J, uh, Jared White again, the receiver. Quarterback threw it. The guy, uh, 
Jared White had not even turned around and it went just sailing right past him. White is uh, one of the sophomores. Uh, Coach uh, Secord told me that several sophomores would be on the field for him, and Jared White's one of them. 18 seconds to go. 18 to go, 17-14, second down and 10 from the 34. Libel rose to the right. He uh, is hit by uh, DeAndre Peoples, and he tried to throw the ball. It's picked up. That may be ruled a fumble, and because it looked like if that was a pass, it went backwards. But White picked it up and ran down the field. I don't see any flags, so that will stand up. As uh, the play goes down to the 33, that just about erased, uh, I got back to the original line of scrimmage. The timeout, Frisco. Timeout Second by Wakeland. Of the half. Timeout by Frisco Wakeland. They've got six seconds left here in the second quarter. Wildcats leading 17 14 over Frisco Wakeland. We'll take a quick break. Back in a moment. And just six seconds left. Libel takes a snap. A pass uh, goes out of bounds. Looked like they were just trying to gain a little bit more yards, maybe for a long field goal. They've got three seconds left. They're down to the 28-yard line. And it's uh, going to be a fourth down play here. And uh, Frisco Wakeland will try a very long field goal. Let's see what kind of leg Cragen has. It's going to be a 45-yard field goal for uh, Tanner Cragen. He's lined up on the right hash mark. Wind is with him on this kick. Yes, and that probably is a big factor in trying this 45-yarder. So let's see. Cragen, again, a pretty good spot on the field. Let's check the snap. It's a good one. The ball is down. The kick on the way, and it's sailing, and the kick is good. And we're going to end up with a flat-footed tie at the half. So we, we played a half uh, here at uh, Gerald Prim Stadium, and after the 45-yard field goal, nothing decided. The Wildcats of Sulphur Springs 7, Frisco Wake for 17, and Frisco Wakeland 17. So uh, it is uh, halftime. Uh, and uh, so uh, let's uh, take a break here, and uh, Chad and I will come back and maybe talk about uh, some statistics and some other stuff here that uh, impressed us in this uh, first uh, first half of play. So 17-17 uh, tie at the half, and we'll take a break back in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Silver Springs High School proudly presents the 58th line of the Blue Blazers as they strike up the band.
by Lecce. Jeff Garza. Anthony Robinette. Steve And Anthony Paraki. And we'd like to thank our awesome boosters for all of and uh, once again, Tanner Cragen will kick off from the 40-yard line. But so far, these kicks from this direction. And, oh, you know what, uh, Chad? The wind has died uh, considerably. Oh, it has. It's uh, down to almost nothing. Yeah, and, the uh, flag's hanging on the poles. We've here. got our, our uh, normal uh, kickoff return here. Uh, Caden Davis and uh, right at the goal line and here comes uh, the return across the 10 Chuck Sims. across the 15 looked like Sims and uh, going to be uh, tripped up uh, uh, about the 16 yard line so a, a good net uh, kick uh, for uh, Frisco Wakeland to, to pin the Wildcats inside the 20 but at least the Wildcats had a chance to return that one as uh, Sims uh, returns it to the 16 yard line That's first down and 10 for the Wildcats certainly a dip 16 Certainly a difference with the wind dying down. They couldn't get yeah. as far back that time. Here come the Wildcats. Well, again, uh, Wallace, the quarterback, and Chuck Sims uh, just to uh, his left. Two receivers left and right for the Wildcats as they start inside their own 20. Back to pass is Wallace. He's in a pattern caught, and here's a receiver dashing. This is Aiden Walker. He's fast. Across the 35, across the 40, across the 45, where he's knocked out of bounds right about the 45-yard line. Beautiful uh, pass play uh, by the Wildcats uh, moving up the field 29 yards to the 45-yard uh, line. So uh, I like that one, Coach Young. Uh, I don't know if that was designed for the second half, but he'll take credit for we it. We talked sure. about all the targets he had, and that was a new one. Yeah. His first reception. Get him involved there. He's still got a lot of speed. Three receivers left, one to the right uh, for Wallace. He takes the snap and will have a running play. Chalk Sims around the corner across the 45. Sims up to about the 50-yard line. That'll be about a five-yard run for Chalk, also called the Corian. Nickname of Chalk. A second down and five for the Wildcats at uh, the midfield mark. As little footballs are flying into the stands, and the fans are so excited down below us. As they well, they should be. A couple of those cheerleaders have a pretty good arm. Here's second down and five. Wallace uh, throws the ball down the field. He's got Lacey. Oh, uh, did he? He was unable to catch it. Lacey came up saying he did catch it. The official says, no, 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 that hit the turf. Looked like it bounced. So it's uh, going to be... Second down, or third down and five now uh, from the 50-yard line. Uh, Lacey certainly looked like he had kind of cleared down there. But, uh, oh, and we also. Holding. 52 on Sulphur Springs. Senior penalty, replay first down. So it wouldn't have mattered anyway, as it turns out, a holding penalty against the Wildcats, and that's the first biggie that we've seen like that. That'll have uh, Coach Offit uh, grabbing for the stomach medication, perhaps. So here we go, back to uh, second down now, and it'll be uh, second down and 15 from the 40-yard line. Wallace ready to go here. We'll take the snap. He's looking deep downfield, fires the ball, incomplete. Went off Bryant Sanchez's hands. I thought I saw a flag back there. And, uh, well, is, is there a yellow? Yeah, there's something yellow around the 30-yard 30 30, line. Just past that numeral 30 there. So another flag here. Oh my! Let's don't let's don't do this. In the backfield, yeah, that uh, he's getting ready to mark that off. He's facing the wrong way for me. Looks like a legal formation. Number 62 was lined up in the backfield. Penalty is declined. Third down. And uh, so, did I hear time out at the end of that, or uh, apparently just uh, briefly here. The Penalty declined, so it'll be third and 15 now from uh, the 40-yard line for the Wildcats. Two receivers left and right for Caden Wallace. They'll take the snap. Gets a big rush. Flushed from the pocket. Wallace scrambles and now throws the ball down the field. Oh, almost intercepted. Had it right in his hands and just could not. I think he was so eagerly anticipating that. That was uh, Dugan Sexton. And he could not hold on for the Wolverines. So Wildcats probably came out of that fairly lucky uh, as uh, 
Sexton, as, as we like to say, showed why he's playing defense there. Did not catch the ball. So fourth down and 15 from the 40-yard line, and Noe Ponce will be back to punt for the Wildcats. They had caught the penalty flag a couple of times uh, on this drive. That lining up in the backfield, that's a very correctable thing that uh, that uh, players uh, will. Oh, a high snap over Ponce's oh, head. No. Oh, this is going to be a disaster. The ball is loose back there, and Frisco Wakeland is on it at the 16-yard line. Oh, my. That one blew up like the cheap cigar. So first down and 10 for Wakeland on the Wildcats 16-yard line after a very high snap uh, sailed over the punter's head, Noe Ponce. That's unfortunately going to give the Wolverines fantastic field position all the way down the 16-yard line. Wildcat territory, 11-13 left in the third quarter, 17-17. And uh, the Wildcats' defense is really going to have to stiffen now against this tough uh, Wakeland offense. Liable, the quarterback. For the running back next to him will take the snap and he'll hand off to Burkhart, but he's blown up by Cameron Coffer, who was uh, there uh, as quick as the ball was. What a great play. And uh, that uh, looked like a defensive play of the game, Chad. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. But it was, uh, he wrapped him up and then just kept uh, taking him back several yards in the in the backfield, so now it's going to be second and uh, looks like 14 for the Wolverines. After a loss all the way back to the 20-yard line, that's a good start defense. You're going to have to probably do that at least two, three more times. Bible from the shotgun will take the snap. He's back to pass, and here comes a rush, and the pass is uh, going to be incomplete. Went off of a receiver. There were a lot of players around that ball, but it somehow found its way onto the turf. So the Wildcats have now held uh, twice. And uh, so here we go, third down and 14 from the 20-yard line. And it looked like Coffert uh, was putting a, a rush on the quarterback again that time. He's had a couple of really great plays. He's uh, said by some to be the, the perhaps the best uh, of the defensive linemen. And uh, so he's showing it right now. Third down and 14 from the 20-yard line. Here's a snap back to Libel. They have another rush coming from the left. Throws the ball oh. down the field. Caught inside the five. First down and 10 uh, for uh, the uh, Wolverines. And once again, it's that very dangerous receiver, Kevin Reichel. First down and 10 all the way down to the three-yard line. A 17-yard completion. First and goal for the Wolverines. See, that's the... That's the hard part of playing defense. You, you do it a couple of times. You don't do it the third time. And first down and a, a new lease on uh, life there with uh, first down and goal. Here come the Wolverines. 10-25 left here in the third quarter, and we're tied at 17. Liable from the shotgun. We'll take the snap. He looks. He throws a pass, and it is going to be incomplete was intended for Reichel again. He had about three defenders around him and sometime, somehow just could not latch on, but he was looked like to be pretty well covered. Tried to thread that in there incomplete. It'll be second down and goal now from the three-yard line. Yeah, teams are going to have to watch where Reichel is on every play this season as uh, he and Libel look like a really good duo. Second down and goal from the three. I bet they mix in a run this time. And no, not this time. Here's a throw into the end zone. It's caught for the touchdown. And again, uh, to Reichel, who just, uh, the defender got there, but he had already caught the ball. And so touchdown for uh, Frisco Wakeland, a three-yard pass. And it was uh, from Libel. I'm going to have to take some notes here, so I'll remember it later. And that makes it a 23-17 score with Cragen's extra point pending. His holder, by the way, is Peyton Lewis, the backup quarterback, who also actually had a running play tonight. Then they put him in as, as a receiver on that last play. Here's the ball down. Uh, the kick is on the way. Actually, I think he was a receiver. He kind of took the ball uh, and came around on a reverse. The kick is good. 10-15 left in the third quarter. New score here from Gerald Prim Stadium. Frisco Wakeland 24 and the Wildcats 17. Let's take a break here, and we'll be back in a moment. And we're back. 10-15 left in the third quarter. 
Cragen with a kickoff for uh, Wakeland. They lead 24-17. And Cragen with a kick, and he boots it, and it's going to look like a fair catch made uh, in the end zone. I think that will uh, be out to the 25 any way you slice it or dice it. Made uh, in the end zone down there, I think. Uh, let's see, that's, a, that's one. That's Caden Davis. Absolutely. Uh, made that. So first down and 10 for the Wildcats at the 25-yard line. One of the things last year, uh, Coach Young uh, made the observation uh, that in the game last year, the Wildcats should have really thumped Frisco Wakeland. The score ended up 37-35, and the reason it did was Wildcat mistakes. And keep that in mind when you think about that snap over the punter's head. That's a, that's a turnover any that, way you look at it. And that turned out to be seven points for the Wolverines. Absolutely. Back to Wallace. Uh, he fakes, and now he throws a pass to Davis. Davis uh, it puts lowers his head, goes across the 25, up uh, to the 27-yard line. That'll be a gain of two on the play. Second down and eight. Uh, the Wildcats at their own 27-yard line as they try to once again have the answer here to even this ball game up. They head up to the line of scrimmage. Again, Davis uh, just uh, to the right of uh, Wallace. Two receivers left and right for the Wildcats. Now Wallace uh, approaches the line and makes sure they're all on the same page. Long count, but he's got four seconds, and they snap it in time. Here's a handoff. Big hole up the middle and racing through there for the Wildcats. They're tackling the ball, but a nice run there by uh, Caden Davis all the way up to the 42-yard line. That's a 15-yard, let's uh, let's say the 43, a 16-yard gain by Davis. First down and 10 for the Wildcats at the 43-yard line. Nice run. That one busted wide open. They must have kept Wakeland waiting long enough. That was snap of about three seconds left on the clock. Two receivers out to the right as uh, Wallace looks down the field, tries to throw an out. Boy, they had hands all over Bryant Sanchez, but uh, th that was allowed, and so it'll be second down and 10 for the Wildcats, incomplete pass. I'm pretty sure Bryant Sanchez thinks that was pass interference, but uh, the referee was right there and didn't, didn't call it. Hey, there's a certain chuck zone, I think, uh, with the defenders and receivers, and perhaps the official rule that that contact occurred in the legal part of, of the field. Second down and 10 now from the 43-yard line. Wallace takes a snap. It'll be a run up the middle. Oh, uh, tough sledding here for uh, Caden Davis as he moves up to the 45-yard line. Gain of two. It'll be third down and eight for the Wildcats at their own 45-yard line. So the Wildcats looking for an answer. And, boy, they've got a playmaker in there right now that you don't see on offense a lot, but uh, Kylan Wade, and he is an exciting receiver. I just watched him uh, during uh, spring football, and uh, he's exciting to watch. So let's see if they go in that direction. Third down and eight. Wallace back to pass. Looking down the field. Throws toward Cairo. And there's some bumping. And oh. uh, tried to make the catch. There's uh, no flags down there. Yeah. Fans don't particularly like it. But, My goodness. Uh, that uh, incomplete pass. Pass interference uh, has not been called yet in this game. There's been plenty of opportunity. Certainly uh, when it comes of, to the Wildcat receivers. That's what I'd call Rooster. Oh, now in uh, the Wildcat. Legal formation. Get, Sulphur Springs, too many men in the backfield. Penalty is declined, fourth down. And again, that's probably a receiver that lined up uh, too far off the line of scrimmage, I, I'm guessing there, which would make it too many men in the backfield. So so that uh, is declined after, so the long pass had it uh, clicked, uh, would have been wiped out. Noe Ponce back into punt, and he's hoping to get his hands on this one. So here's a fourth down and eight, a ball at the 45-yard line. 8-16 left in the third quarter. Wakeland leading 24-17. Good snap to Potts this time. He uh, gets it off. It's a nice kick uh, taken at the 21-yard line. Oh, a broken tackle across the 25, across the 30, the 35 to the 40, and then a big bad collision over there around the 41-yard line, knocking the receiver out of bounds. And it'll be Wakeland... Uh, First down and 10. Looks like they're going to mark it at uh, the 42-yard line. And so the Wolverines will start uh, at the uh, 42 of, uh, in their own end of the field. 8.03 left in the third quarter. And uh, Wakeland with a 24-17 uh, lead here 
in the third quarter. And once again, Libel, the quarterback. And waiting for the snap now, man in motion, and he will hand off to the receiver coming around, and he uh, moves across the 50 and all the way down to the 46-yard line. Number 10 again. Once again, Peyton Lewis on that receiver around, and it's good for a first down all the way to the Wildcats' 46-yard line. That is a gain of 14 on the play. And uh, so down uh, to the Wildcats, uh, 46, first down and 10 for the Wolverines. Who, uh, they've made some halftime adjustments. Of course, they only had to drive. Uh, that last drive uh, ended up uh, going uh, With seven. 16 yards. Exactly. Again, Libel, the quarterback. Again, Lewis in motion, this time fake, and hand off to a guy that will run it right up the middle. 15. And this is yeah, Delashaw, and he's down to the 36-yard line, and that's going to be good enough for a first down, at my eyes say. Looks like a – oh, well, they moved it back, so they made a liar out of me, so it'll be second down and one from the 37-yard line. Moved that ball back a yard and made a difference. The second and a short one, I would say. From the 37-yard line. Back to Libel. He'll throw a pass out in the flat caught by Jared White. He's across the 35 and a good secure tackle by the Wildcats in that secondary. That might have been Campbell Cody there uh, down at the uh, 34-yard line. That's first down and 10 for, uh, no, that was Chase Haney, excuse me. That's six instead of five all the way across the field. So good, uh, good tackle there by Chase Haney. But still first down for uh, Wakeland, but he did uh, stop the ball carrier in his tracks. And now Libel will hand off to Burkhardt, and he hits up in there. Burkhardt breaking into the secondary, and he will get close to another first down. He's going to be down at the uh, 25-yard line. That's one yard short of the first down. Second down and one after a strong run by Wakeland. Wakeland beginning to run the football effectively now on this drive. Two receivers out to the right, single receiver to the left. And Libel beginning to click back there. From the shotgun, will take the snap. He will hand off and hitting up in there Burkhart. And looks like he squeezes by for the first down. Down to uh, around the uh, 23-yard line. First down and 10 for the Wolverines. We're under the six-minute mark here in the third quarter. And Frisco... Wakeland already leads 24 to 17. Every time I think about Frisco Wakeland, I think about uh, good old Andy Holt, uh, the uh, former uh, Wildcat and uh, a great soccer player in high school, has two state championships since he's moved to Wakeland. Back to uh, Libel, and he fakes and throws. It's caught, and it's a touchdown as once again that fakey uh, play where he fakes to the running back. And looks like he hit Kevin Reichel again for the touchdown. He a 22-yard uh, completion. And uh, Wakeland moves their lead out to 13 points here. Wildcats are going to have to get back in this. <coughs> and extra point pending now by Cragen. And again, Lewis is holder, the backup quarterback. And wide receiver in this ball game. And the snap a little bit high, but not bad. And Cragen puts the foot into it, and the kick is good. 528 left here in the uh, third quarter. New score now here from Gerald Prim Stadium. Frisco Wakeland 31, the Wildcats 17. We'll take a break back in a moment. 528 left uh, in the third quarter here at Gerald Prim Stadium. Frisco 31, Wildcats 17. Frisco about to kick off for the uh, Wildcats to receive our Jay Hodge Chevrolet kickoff sponsor. That is uh, Frisco Wakeland, and uh, here's uh, Cragen on the kickoff. Not the original uh, raccoons. Here's the uh, kick uh, on the way from uh, Cragen. This one's uh, going to sail all the way through the end zone and hit that back wall back there on a couple of hops. So first down and 10 for the Wildcats at the 25-yard uh, line. They've got their work cut out for them now. Let's kind of see what they're made of here. Wildcats probably going to uh, do some more passing. A lot of targets out there. Of course, uh, uh, Caden Davis, a favorite uh, target for rushing and catching. 
He's got 71 yards in the game so far. I'll tell you a player that uh, we might uh, see kind of emerge in this situation is uh, Bryson Lacey. Now he's one, I'm going to say, a pick to click here or one to watch. Uh, he's on the wide out on the left side here as Wallace back in the shotgun. We'll take the snap, and this indeed will be a running play, and it's a burst uh, uh, through there for the Chuck nice Sims. run. Uh, Chalk Sims on the run, and it's uh, good for nine yards, I believe, all the way to the 30, let's see where they mark it, 33. Okay, so second down and two from the 33-yard line, an eight-yard uh, run there, nicely done by Chalk Sims. That's a real strength, I think, of this Wildcat team this year, the running backs, Caden Davis and Chalk Sims, both returning, and both uh, had pretty good years last year with over 500 yards rushing. Wallace back in the shotgun will take the snap, and he'll try another rush, and here comes Shock Sims, and he thunders forward. Uh, as Matt Young says, uh, hey, you expect pass? Here comes a run right at you. And a couple of runs produce a first down up to the 41-yard line for the Wildcats. First down and 10 uh, for the Wildcats at their own 41. Another eight-yard run. And again, Wakeland thinking like us, perhaps, Chad, they as uh, they begin to look for the pass, and... Uh, Matt Young says, I'll, I'll fool you. Now they're going to throw this time. Wallace back in the pocket. He's looking uh, down the field and now sails it down the field, and it's going to be oh. uh, intercepted by uh, Frisco Wakeland. And making the interception there for Wakeland will be their uh, outside linebacker, Jake Marshall, considered one of the team leaders uh, by uh, Coach uh, Secord, Marty, Marty Secord in his 14th year at Frisco Wakeland. So an interception, and that's a second mistake that we've seen here in the third quarter as uh, old Mo has changed jerseys, as uh, he used to say on Monday Night Football, and old Mo right now is wearing that uh, white jersey of Wakeland. First down and 10 from the Wildcats 41-yard line. Libel wants to strike while the iron is hot. He gets rushed. He sails it down the field. It is caught by Reichel. Reichel. And he's going to be down at the 17-yard line. He had to come back for that one, and that's almost unfair. Uh, Chase Haney looked like he had pretty good uh, coverage, but uh, when Reichel had to come back for it, it's, it's easier for the receiver to adjust to that than the defender usually because the receiver kind of knows where he's going. First down and 10 for uh, Wakeland at the 17-yard line. That's a kind of a smart play there to... When the momentum's in your favor, you try for the big play, and that one worked. Two receivers left, one to the right, and Libel will hand off. Here's White sweeping to the right, and he goes, it looks like he was knocked out of bounds at about the 15, but no, it's going to give him a few more yards beyond that down to about the 13-yard line. So a gain of four, it'll be second down and six from the 13-yard line for uh, Frisco Wakeland. 340 left in the third quarter. Wakeland with a 14-point lead, and they are threatening to put the lead way out there at uh, more than uh, the 14 points that it is uh, at right now. Libel from the shotgun, takes a snap, looking to the left, throws a fade pattern, and it's caught by Reichel for a touchdown. Oh, my, those guys have just uh, been tough for the Wildcats to stop, and that was a beautifully executed play there. Reichel just uh, did a great job of running under it, and Libel put it right on the money. Flag after the play. I'm not sure. Probably probably a celebration right. flag, you would think. Let's see. Let's get the word from Mr. Whitehat there. Unsportsmanlike conduct number 47 on Sulphur Springs. Can they be enforced on the kickoff? So the Wildcats take a personal foul uh, after the touchdown, and that will be enforced on the kickoff, as you heard the official say. So that would be another in uh, the mistakes that we've seen here in this third quarter. As Cragen gets ready for the extra point, a 20-point Wakeland lead as, oh, they've blown this ball game open. Now they're going to try for two as uh, the holder, Lewis, uh, looking for some help. And now he scrambles toward the end zone, and he got into the end zone for two points. Boy, if that didn't just rub salt in the wound, I don't know what did. 3.33 left here in the uh, third quarter. New score here from Gerald Prim Stadium. Frisco Wakeland 39 and the Wildcats 17. Let's take a break here, and we'll be back in a moment. 
And we're back at Gerald Prem Stadium, 3.33 left. Frisco Wakeland, 39, the Wildcats, 17. And uh, a great field position for their kickoff, Don. Yeah, I figure this will land uh, in about stew site number 17 in Buford Park. <laughs> Here's a kick by Craig, and he and puts it the could foot go into it. through the uprights. Uh, oh, boy, I think that cleared that wall. Yeah, the kids did. are chasing it back right. there. Somebody's yeah. going to get a snow cone on that one. Yeah, the wall, what would that be? Probably another 10 yards. Uh, so it went all the way through the end zone, plus the extra 10 yards, and all the way over the wall, the kids were scrambling to pick up that football. There's an inner fence back there. It didn't clear that, thank goodness. But it doesn't matter. It, all it amounts is uh, that, uh, all, um, that that all comes to. The Wildcats have first down and 10 from the 25. I figure you might would pooch that or do something, try to get the team inside. Sure. I guess you start playing cute like that and you can get burned. Here's Wallace uh, from the shotgun. We'll take the snap. Our running play. Here's uh, Davis. And Davis is uh, going to be gang tackled at about the 25 that'll be a gain of maybe one on the play up to the 26 yard line so second down and nine for the wildcats from their own 26. 313 left in this miserable third quarter i'm going to blame the quarter this is just an evil quarter so far wallace uh, back from the shotgun two receivers left and right We'll take the snap. Looking, and now we'll have a draw play. And here's Chalk Sims across the 30 to the 35. Chalk to the 40. And uh, he is going to be knocked off his feet uh, at around the uh, 42-yard line. Uh, First down and 10 for the Wildcats after that 16-yard run by Chalk Sims. So that worked out pretty good. Again, uh, Wakeland figuring, oh, you got a pass on on second down and nine, and uh, Coach Young again fooling them there. Trip receivers off to the right, uh, single receiver to the left, and here's a snap and uh, another running play, and this one's going to be bogged up on the left side. This will lose yardage back to the 41. It'll be second down and 11. And uh, Chuck Sims again. Sims the running back. Boy, you know you tuck that three in there, and that's that's hard to tell from the two. <laughs> But uh, that is indeed Chalk Sims. Just like our kickers, 13 and 14. 14, yes. Yeah, so then just don't make it easy for us. Talk to Greg Owens. Right, yeah, that, that's one of those deals. Second down and 11. If that's the worst problem we've got, we're in good shape. Here's a pass down toward uh, Kylan Wade. He caught it, but out of bounds in a flag fly. The flag's over there. there he was all over him and uh, pushed him out of bounds while he was in the air. Had the ball. He's... Uh, he Slow to get up, but he looks like he's okay. Didn't make the catch, but he looked like he was clearly out of bounds. But as Chad pointed out, the the uh, aggravated assault happened uh, prior to the catch. <laughs> the alleged. It, was, it may have been a little assault. worse than that. Here comes the call. And holding on the defense number 36. It's a 10-yard penalty and an automatic first down. They had to get that official oriented. Looked like, well, maybe he was going back to the spot of the foul. I guess that's it. Uh, well, he, he had it all right and figured out there. But first down, automatic first down for the Wildcats at the 49-yard line in uh, Wakeland territory. Trip receivers out to the right. Single receiver Lacey here in front of us for Wallace. And takes a snap, and it'll be another running play. And then again, uh, Sims across the 40 and uh, down uh, into about the 35-yard line as that was a 14-yard scamper by uh, Kadarian uh, Sims. Uh, Decorian, excuse me, Decorian uh, Chalk Sims. And another flag down back here at the 50. Uh, he Uh-oh. broke about three tackles getting through there. He uh, really powered through on that play. Holding. Number 79, Silver Springs. Senior penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Why does it always you brag on them in the first half? Oh, no flags, everything fine. And then, you know, it's just like, you know, we get a flag festival here in the, in the third quarter. We're just having lots of them. So that's unfortunate, but, you know, that's – that's more like uh, what we expect. That's why we commented on how crisply the first half was played, but it's kind of deteriorating here in the third quarter. Here's back to Wallace. He throws the ball. Ooh, bounced off uh, Lacey incomplete. So it'll be uh, second down in 20 now. 
back at our original line of scrimmage a couple of plays ago, but now a longer uh, uh, goal there, first and 20, or then second and 20. Uh, Ten-yard penalties, penalties offsetting. We got the first down on the first one and then pushed us way back here. So quite a long uh, uh, goal for the uh, Wildcats here, second and 20. Yeah, this is, a, this is always a tough call. Uh, you know, of course, a, a lot of coordinators uh, you know, might want to bite off a big piece and then uh, try to get it next time or go for the whole thing. We'll see. Wallace, big rush, a screen pass, incomplete. Tried to hit Wiley Bennett with a pass and incomplete. And that they looked like they were all in that screen. I don't, I don't think that was going to do much. And uh, Landry Meskimen comes bouncing in there to be a receiver now. He's in there with Bryant Sanchez with Wiley Bennett Got an and up. Noe Ponce. Have an update on the score. Mount Vernon's 28, Bonham's 3. So they're, right. uh, that's really quite ahead in that uh, contest. Start off the Art Bryles era over there in proper fashion. And, oh, I saw a lineman flinch. Yeah. And I'm sure the officials did too. So third down. Part of the and snap. False start, number 22, Silver. Five-yard penalty. Replay third down. Well, I take that back. Uh, that there was something else, but but I, I definitely saw a flinch in the line. But the, that, that official called something that was a little closer to him, and so it'll be 25 yards needed now on third from the Wildcats' 36-yard line. Oh my! Can this quarter not end soon enough? Here's a draw play, and this is Caden Davis. He's across the 40 and up uh, to about the uh, 43-yard line. And that's about uh, oh, 18 yards short of the first down. Fourth down and 18. And let's see what the Wildcats will do here. I have, oh, yeah, Noe Ponce. I, I, I was looking for him to come off the sideline. Of course he's not going to do that. He's playing wide receiver. He's already out on there. On that other side, he just wanders back there to the punting position from where he was. So that makes sense. But after years of uh, conditioning of looking for the punter to come off the sideline, <laughs> that's uh, not going to happen uh, this year for the Wildcats as long as Noe's out there. Gets a good snap. And the kick is uh, a low trajectory, takes a hop, taken by Wakeland at the 24, runs into his own man, runs around the 30, the 35, to the 40, and a nice uh, tackle from behind for the Wildcats uh, on the play there. And that was George Greenway on the tackle on the special teams. Uh, keep further damage there. First down and 10 for Wakeland at their own 43-yard uh, line. And the Wildcats have just had a hard time sustaining a drive here in the third quarter uh, while Wakeland has uh, gone crazy here with 22 unanswered points. So this turned into a tie to down to minus 22. Here's a running play by Burkhart. He sweeps to the left. He gets around the corner, 45-50, 45-40, and finally uh, knocked uh, down at uh, around the 30-yard line. Oh, my, as uh, Burkhart gets around the corner. And a big run of 18, well, more than that, uh, 28 yards. And uh, that almost equaled the 39 that they rushed for last year. But, uh, you know, different teams and all that kind of stuff. But but they have uh, really, uh, they look like they're having a lot of fun right now. Kind of reminds me of that Florida bunch that we played uh, out there at uh, ESPN's Wide World of Sports. Here's a pass, and it's caught by Lewis. He's into the secondary across the 20, across the 15, and down to the 13-yard line, first down and 10, as Libel just continues to rack up the stats and continues to uh, hit those passes. So first down and 10. I think that was around a 17-yard gain to uh, Lewis. And that's the end of the third quarter. Boy, it couldn't happen soon enough. It was a terrible one for the Wildcats. We've played three here from Gerald Prim Stadium. Frisco Wakeland, 39, and the Wildcats, 17. Let's take a break. Back in a moment. And we're back. It's the fourth quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter. Frisco, Wakeland 39, Wildcats 17. And the ball first down and 10 from the 14 for Wakeland. They'll start with a Burkhart sweep around the right side. He's across the 10. A flag flies. 
as uh, that play ended up down around the five, but looks like it's going to come back perhaps. But uh, let's not jump the call here. Holding. Number 88, Frisco. Send your penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. And uh, they'll march that one off. It'll move all the way back to the 23-yard line. So that's a 10-yard penalty, of course, for holding. So uh, first down and 20 now for Frisco Wakeland at uh, the 23-yard uh, line. First down and it says first and 19. I, I, I don't know I guess, the math on that. Uh, that uh, I don't know. That looked like it's well anyway. Let's let's not quibble over a yard. First down uh, from the 23-yard uh, line. And there's a snap back to Libel. Handoff. Here's a sweep uh, receiver coming around to the left side. Broken tackle and then knocked out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Ten again. Chase Haney with uh, Lewis. yeah Lewis. Uh, he's been pretty active. And, again, that's a, one of those new players for Wakeland. I do not remember him last year. He's just a junior. But uh, he's been a pretty active player for uh, Frisco Wakeland. That was a short gain on the play. And, uh, uh, so second down and 17 from the 20-yard line for the Wolverines. I don't know if the Wildcats have played that many Wolverines. I, I don't think so. I don't have the stats on that, Doug. And here's a snap and a fake to the running back. Uh, now here's a throw down a short pass. that's caught by uh, Della Shaw, and he moves inside the 10, inside the 5. Oh, a big pile. They're going to push him all the way into the end zone. Touchdown. Yep. That's kind of a new rule. Used to, you couldn't do that, but uh, they've allowed that in years past, and you see those big uh, guys around the goal line. They just push everybody, push the whole pile in there. Touchdown for uh, for Frisco Wakeland, as that was a 20-yard uh, a touchdown pass. And again, uh, went from uh, Libel to uh, the running back there for Frisco Wakeland. Again, that was Chance Delashaw. So spreading the wealth now as uh, the uh, deficit mounts here is a, boy, just a nightmarish uh, second half for the Wildcats after it had to be a pretty heady uh, halftime group at 17-17. And here's the extra point by Cragen, and the kick is good. So 11-31 left here in the fourth quarter. Frisco Wakeland 45, the Wildcats 17. We'll take a break back in a moment. Frisco Wakeland 46 and the Wildcats 17. We're going to be kicking off here with our Jay Hodge Chevrolet kickoff sponsor, home of the $100 touchdown. That uh, you've heard the commercials during the game, and uh, the Wildcats have scored two touchdowns, and so that's a $200 discount on your new or used car you tomorrow. Tomorrow, right? Tomorrow you at bet. Jay Hodge Chevrolet. Anything in stock. Here comes the kickoff. Uh, I'm looking for a deep kick here. What about you, Don? Well, uh, being against a little bit of a wind, and uh, I, I predict that we may see a return on this, but uh, let's we'll see if Cragen makes a, a liar out of me again. And, oh, it is. It's a beautiful kick. It hit five deep in the end zone, and the Wildcats, once uh, they, they were up uh, maybe between the five and the ten, so they retreated back a little bit because they could tell it's going to be over their head. So the bottom line is another touchback, and Cragen has been the reason that the Wildcats have stayed kind of bottled up. They, they have not had an opportunity uh, at a, a good uh, run back. Uh, he's just kind of shut down that uh, all night long. I think they've had a return of two, maybe one, it's just uh, that I can recall. So here come the Wildcats as they've really got their work cut out for them. It is 46 to 17. I think I went to the break saying 45, but. Uh, Tried to short him a point. But that extra point. Back to Wallace, and as the that snap, flags fly everywhere. That's blown dead. Probably going to be a false start, but we'll, here it is. Prior to the snap. False start, 55 on Sulphur Springs. It's five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Well, they'll hate that in the film session, I'm sure. First yeah. down and 15 now from the 20-yard line. We spoke too soon at halftime saying there weren't many penalties, and now there's uh, oh, three boy. times as many penalties. That and, uh, looked like a graffiti or what a confetti uh, 
Not parade in New York City, there were so many yellow flags flying on that one. I think they all saw that one. First down and 15, here's a screen, and the ball is incomplete. Tried to get it to uh, Chalk Sims. Looked like it might have been a little bit behind him as he reached back to try to get it, but couldn't latch on. And so that'll be second down and 15 from the 20-yard line for the Wildcats, who have just had a terrible time in the second half mounting uh, much offense. Well, and they've uh, suffered from 45 yards and penalties uh, well, against them, so that's really pushed them back. That will definitely uh, put a hitch in your get-along. And there's a snap back uh, to the quarterback of Wallace. He throws it down the field. It is caught down there. I believe that was T. Meyer. And uh, I believe that, yes, uh, Ten. Jake, or excuse me, Zach T. Meyer. And uh, that'll be good uh, for seven yards, uh, second down and three for the Wildcats. Uh, at the 32-yard line, so that'll set up uh, a third and three. I think, did I say second three? Third and three for the Wildcats at the 32-yard line. Try to sneak one in on the officials. They're too smart for that. So, uh, big play for the Wildcats. They try to get something positive going here. Jaden Wallace, the quarterback, takes a snap and will hand off Chalk Sims, and he is going to be hit right around the line of scrimmage, and that uh, will probably, we'll see if they're going to punt the ball away or see if they try to go for it here on fourth and three. And uh, looks like a punting unit. And once again, yeah, know he punts uh, deployed uh, back uh, to the punting position. And so another unsuccessful drive for the Wildcats, and Having to punt the ball away down 46-17. There's still 10-11 left, but sometimes you try to go for it every time and you'll end up getting beat like 70 to 17. Right. It's going to be punting from about the 18-yard line. And there's and a snap. dead again. Another whistle, and uh, I think they ran out of time perhaps on that. We're a little slow. That Coach Owens is really on the field now as he's delay of the game. Number 11, Sulphur, five-yard penalty, replay, fourth down. And they have to penalize somebody, so they pick on the poor punter. But uh, it looked like they were a little slow coming on, maybe a hard decision to make, uh, but uh, a little slow getting on the field, but easy for me to be critical, I guess, of the coaching staff. Here's a ball back to Noe Ponce and a kick on the way, and he drills it out of there. Takes a big high hop and taken by White, and then he is hit right away. Wiley Bennett was among the players down there real quick. And also uh, a number that we have not called tonight, and that was uh, Joel Vasquez, uh, part of that special team. He was all over that ball, too. Ball is at the 38, first down and 10 for Frisco Wakeland. And I think they have scored every time they have touched the ball here in the second half. And again, they've scored uh, 29 unanswered points. And here's uh, a uh, run by Jared uh, White. He breaks some tackles in there. Oh my, that uh, was, boy, five, six, seven yards uh, after the initial contact. And uh, all the way up to the 46 yard line, be two yards short of the first down. So second down and two from the uh, 46. And that didn't look very good. There's a, there's a lot of, I don't know if uh, there are a lot of new guys uh, in there right now. We'll try to call some of these guys' names. Uh, Colson Ivey is in, in the defensive line. I see him down there for the Wildcats. Here's a snap to the quarterback, Libel. He'll hand off again. White ripping right up the middle, first down, and all the Huge way to game. the 44-yard line. Still see Dietrich Clayton in there. Right there. And now in at linebacker for the Wildcats, we have Cameron Hargrave. Looks like a, let's see if I can get that. Another new Wildcat that uh, is uh, Colbin Wiley is in there. Lots of, uh, we're getting to see a lot of new faces here. Also in for the Wildcats is, uh, well, he's, he's Cordarian uh, Bull Turner. And here's another handoff to White. Again, a broken tackle right up the middle. He'll run for a first down. We're getting to see a lot of missed tackles here by the Wildcats. And first, uh, 
Well, that's close to the first down. It, yeah, they're will... going to give it to him. It was right at 10 yards, and they're going to let uh, move the chains. Absolutely. So uh, first down and 10 from the 34-yard line. 8-10 still left uh, here in the fourth quarter. As uh, Frisco Wakeland has blown open a tight ball game with a big second half. Disappointing for the Wildcats and their partisans. And a quarterback back in the shotgun. We'll take the snap and try White again. White on the run. He's across the 30, down around the 25. I mean, just Nine 8 yards. and 10 yards of whack here. All the way down to the 25. Short of the first down by a yard. So second down and uh, a long one, which usually translates to a yard and a half. And the ball down around the Wildcat 25-yard line. Gives Wild Jared Bible. White 60 yards for the game, so he's uh, gaining a lot of it on this drive. And Libel's still in there. He's going the whole way at quarterback. We'll take the snap. He hands off White again across 25, across the 20, and down around uh, the 16-yard uh, line. First down and 10 uh, for uh, Frisco Wakeland. Frisco, it's a 10-yard penalty from the spot. Replay second down. Well, that uh, wiped that one out. Yeah, that'll that'll put a kink in things. Uh, the holding penalty. So, now march off against uh, Wakeland back to the 30-yard line. So it's uh, going to be second down and six. After subtracting spot of the foul, 10 yards, all that, and end up with second down and six. Uh, we're down to uh, 650 here in the fourth quarter. Again, Wakeland leading 46 to 17. Back to Libel and another running play right up the middle. Oh, going uh, for a first down. And that was uh, Charlie Burkhardt. And he is a hard runner from the beginning to the end. Because a blue football just bounced uh, over our head here. Getting, uh, almost put it up on the photog deck. Actually, I guess there is no photog deck up there. It's uh, at our it's level. This is, a one, this is a one-story <laughs> press box. That's called the roof, Don. The roof. Absolutely. wonder if they had to replace their roof after the hail back in March. I sure did. Second down and six uh, from the uh, – no, first down first and, and ten, ten from the 20-yard line. And here's a handoff again. Uh, uh, Burkhart, uh, this was a short gain that time. The Wildcats defense coming up and – uh, making good play there. And so a uh, very uh, short gain there of a couple of yards. Let's just call it uh, second down and uh, eight. And down around the 18. And this would be a long eight because more like eight and a half. 537 left here in the fourth quarter. Again, Wakeland 46, Wildcat 17. Libel from the shotgun as they are taking every second off the clock here. And here's a handoff sweeping to the left. This is White and across the 15. And, uh, oh, uh, making a nice effort to stay on his feet and got uh, he'll, uh, ruling down around the 10. He scrambled down to about the 8. I can recall back in the day when uh, there was a penalty for crawling. <laughs> I bet that hadn't been called since uh, Red Grange was uh, right. running wild at Illinois. Since they started using face mask, or what? Do you, yeah, <laughs> that the, long ago when the, they were uh, leather helmets. The or? leather helmets went away. <laughs> but there used to be a penalty for crawling, and that looked like a prime example there. But I'm sure that's been wiped off the books a long time. Third and one for Third the Wolverines from the ten yard line, and uh, I think there maybe is. New quarterback, this is Lewis handing off to White. Right up the middle of Main Street down to the one-yard line and uh, just uh, denied uh, White on the run. And first down and goal for uh, Frisco Wakeland as the clock uh, down to 432. Again, Wakeland uh, 46, Wildcat 17, 29 unanswered points here in the fourth quarter. Wildcats will be on the road next week. Boy, it doesn't get any easier 
a real explosive always uh, love joy team will be traveling over to Lucas for that one. There is no town of Lovejoy. That's a school. And then we'll be back here the week after that for homecoming against Roy City. Yeah. Time out. Frisco. Two games First time out of the half. Two games is all you get. Uh, 4 6 left in the fourth quarter. Uh, Frisco, Wakeland, 46, Wildcats, 17. Let's take a break. Back in the moment. 4.06 left in the ball game. Uh, Frisco, Wakeland, 46, Wildcats, 17. Frisco has the ball. First and goal on the one-yard line. Yeah, Two-yard line. One or the other. Uh, Lewis back in the shotgun. We'll take the snap. White will get the call, and it's only deserving that he would dive into the end zone for a touchdown. He's been a big part of this drive, so a two-yard uh, touchdown run for Jared White. Yeah, that, and that uh, uh, lead goes dials up to, you know, somebody will see 52-17, they'll think, oh, Sulphur Springs was never in that ball game. And it was tied up at the half. Yes. Extra point for Cragen now for uh, Wakeland. Brings Jared's wide, uh, his stats up to, he has 79 yards in the ball game. Most of them on that drive, I think. Somebody jumped into the neutral zone that was wearing a blue uniform, and so That's I, I would imagine you would decline this. You don't want to be a yard closer. Doing a close All call. All sides, game. number 97 on Sulphur Springs. Half the distance. Replay the down. That's almost like they didn't give him an option. If I was kicking, I would want to continue to kick from the 10-yard line. He wouldn't want to move it into the nine. That's That violates the natural order of things. But I don't know. Perhaps you cannot decline that penalty. They certainly insist on enforcing it. Maybe, maybe that's the rule. And so they'll move the extra point mark to the nine. That shouldn't make a whole lot of difference. But it's, it's one yard closer than usual for Cragen. The snap, a good one. The ball is down. The kick on the way. And the kick is good. So 4-0-1 left uh, here in the uh, fourth quarter. New score from Gerald Prim Stadium. Frisco Wakeland 53 and the Wildcats 17. Let's take a break back in a moment. Frisco Wakeland leads the Wildcats 53-17. 4-0-1 left in the game. Jay, Jay Hodge Chevrolet, home of the $100 touchdown discount. Here's Cragen's kick on the way, and it's uh, going to be returned, actually. And here uh, comes the return for the Wildcats across 25 oh. to 30. And Ch uh, Chalk Sims uh, well, got the boss excited there for just a second, but got dragged down at the 36-yard line. He did pop through he, a little hole He there. just had one more guy to get past, but uh, it was pretty fast, and they uh, slowed him down. They wrapped him up at the... Uh, uh, is it going to be the 30, 36? Six. Yep, 36, 36 yard line. First down so. and 10. There's still 358 left uh, here in the fourth quarter. And uh, we're beginning to. Uh, Caden Wallace is still in there. He's got J.J. Uh, Hall is now in the backfield with him. An exciting little player. I saw him score a touchdown in a scrimmage, uh, a intra squad scrimmage. And. Here's a handoff to Hall, and Hall squir squirts across up to the 41-yard line. Five-yard run by J.J. He'll actually uh, answer to Allen also, but uh, everybody calls him J.J. Yeah, I can see that. So second down and five. I'm glad to see him uh, get in there and get some action. We've got uh, Landry Meskimen is in as a receiver. We've still got uh, Lacey in as a receiver. Trip receivers off to the left for the Wildcats on second and five. Back to Wallace, another running play, another run. Oh, a nice run again by uh, J.J. Hall. He's uh, going to be one yard uh, short of the first down, maybe less than a yard uh, short of the first down, uh, probably two feet if I had to be exact. So... Uh, uh, third down and two feet. Can't put that on the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> a one inch and uh, two feet, all the same. It's a yard. And here's a snap and uh, fake. No, a handoff to Hall. Uh, he was uh, hit immediately and tried to make something out of it, but came up short. Looks like he lost a couple of yards on that one. Yeah, that'll be back at the 43-yard uh, line. That'll be three yards short of the first down and. 
Be fourth down and three. There's 231 left. Looks like they may just uh, go for this here as uh, Wildcats uh, go for it here. And Jaden Wallace, the quarterback, two receivers left and right. J.J. Hall in the backfield. And uh, Hall in motion. Here's a pass to Hall, incomplete. No, he took a hit uh, uh, anyway, but uh, uh, didn't, the ball was incomplete, so it'll be a uh, ball over on downs. And we'll go back to Frisco Wakeland, and they still have 208 left. Offsides, number 33 on Frisco. Go. Five-yard penalty, result of the play, first down. Well, hold the phone. That's a very lucky break uh, the, on a penalty for the Wildcats. Well, finally, uh, one of them that went their way. The other offside uh, for Frisco. That makes it easier to play defense sometimes if you have the head start. So first down and 10 for the Wildcats now at their own 48-yard line. And Wallace, the quarterback. Again, two receivers left and right. We'll take the snap. Wallace is back to pass. He rolls to the right, looks. Now dumps the ball uh, to uh, the man in the in the stripes was wide open. Yes, and out he, of bounds. He batted it away. Here, but uh, incomplete. But uh, no uh, no flag or anything like that. Second down and ten after the incomplete pass. And Wallace uh, doing a good job of just putting it in an area where it's not going to be in trouble. Trip receivers out to the left, one to the right here on second down and 10 from the Wildcats 48 yard line and a running play for J.J. Hall and he will gain, uh, looks like a yard to the 49 yard line will be third down and nine. Wildcats at their own 49 and the clock under two minutes here. Frisco Wakeland 53, Wildcats 17, 139. 138 and counting on the clock in the ball game. They're taking their time here on this third and long third, third and nine for the Wildcats. Campbell Cody is uh, in there in the slot on the left side, along with Noe Ponce on the left. Here's uh, back to pass uh, Wallace, and uh, he got a big rush, and uh, I think that's the first time that he's been sacked uh, in the ball game. It was kind of a pressure sack as yeah, he kind of a tripped pocket and kind yeah. of collapsed there, and he just kind of saw. Look, look for the ground. He didn't have time to look for anybody. So it'll be fourth down. And uh, looks like uh, about uh, 14, perhaps, or 15. 14. There you go. So they lost about five yards on uh, that last play, getting sacked. Here's a snap back to Wallace. Okay, he's going to throw the ball down the field, incomplete. Tried to get it into Lacey. And that'll send the ball. Now we go over on downs with just 47 ticks left uh, here in the fourth quarter. And if I had to guess, I would say that it would be proper that we would see the old uh, knee. Uh, one of my favorite plays when one of my teams is doing it that's got the game in hand. I just don't see any reason for anything else, but I'm kind of old fashioned like that. Once again, Lewis is the quarterback, the backup quarterback for Wakeland. First down and 10. They may want him to run a few plays from the 44. Let's see. And he will hand off and run right up the middle and uh, down around the 40-yard line. Pretty good tackle technique there by Dietrich Clayton who came up and applied the tackle at the 39-yard line. Gain of five on the play. Second down and five. And... They'll have to play. They'll have to snap one more time. There is one second difference between the uh, time on the scoreboard and the and the time that they have to snap the ball. So they'll have to do it one more time. This will be the next to last play of the game. We're right up the middle here, and that'll stop the clock temporarily for a first down down to the 30-yard line. And uh, they will, well, I, they're just going to let it roll now. And that'll be it all the way to triple zero. And that's going to do it in a big second half by Frisco Wakeland after a 17-17 tie at the end of uh, the uh, first half. Frisco Wakeland scores 36 unanswered points in the second half. A disappointing result for the Wildcats that just had one of those third quarters to forget and hopefully the team can because they're going to be 
seriously uh, challenged next week to play a, a pretty good uh, Lucas Lovejoy team. But that's going to do it uh, here from uh, Gerald Prim Stadium. The Wildcats uh, open the season with a 53-17 to loss to Frisco Wakeland. And uh, without further ado, we might as well go ahead and wrap it up as the handshake line is going on right now. Uh, we've had uh, Chad Young here in the press box. Chad, any final thoughts on, on this? Well, yeah, the second half, there was just uh, uh, the, the way the stats are looking, of course, uh, uh, Wakeland came out and just opened it up. Uh, and and the uh, Wildcats just uh, couldn't couldn't recover. Uh, too many penalties and too, uh, uh, just too much uh, offense on the other side for them to handle. And, uh, a few mistakes, too. Yes, yeah, so a few hurt. mistakes. But uh, uh, we'll, we'll see you folks here at Lovejoy, and I uh, hope you'll be listening. Uh, that's an away game. And then we'll see you back here at Gerald Prim Stadium on the 20th. September 20th is going to be against Roy City. And, of course, that's homecoming. Once again, our final score here from Gerald Prim Stadium, uh, Frisco Wakeland's Wolverines 53 and the Sulphur Springs Wildcats 17. We thank you so much uh, for joining us this evening and so long, everybody.